Hello and welcome to another How to Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher. Today I'm going to give some career advice to the junior developers, the, the developers who are just starting out, as well as to my former self. So this is some of the things that I would suggest to my former self as a web developer about 20 years ago. So the first thing on my list is not to be afraid to ask questions because there are no stupid questions. There are only stupid answers. And if you're in a, a team of say 30 or 40 web developers, or if you're just in a room with five or six developers and you're struggling on, on some piece of code, some piece of logic, or just an error code that's come through that you're, you're scratching your head on, even if it's perhaps an installation or a configuration issue, if you're stuck, do not just hide away in a corner and um, sweat it out. The thing is that people will be more appreciative if you can ask them the questions and come up with the solutions quicker than if you were to hide away and uh, be embarrassed because you do not know how to get past this issue. By asking these questions, it will show the rest of the team that you are willing to not only improve your own development skills, but also complete the tasks within the desired timeframe. And that's a very important thing to show to both your manager as well as the, uh, the other developers on the team. So the second piece of advice that I would give is to change the web development company that you're working for within say two, maybe three years. Now I know that some people prefer to stay in the company that they're in for longer than, far longer than that. And I do know web developers in their, their jobs that are happily in their jobs and have been for say 11, 12, 13 plus years. And that's perfectly fine. But for me, I needed to change the company that I was working for in order to to gain different skill sets and also experience different things in web development. So for instance, I started out working for a company of maybe three or four developers, and then I moved to, to a more international company and that had maybe 30 odd developers in there, um, as well as working with a QA team that was held abroad. You had different challenges with that. Uh, you had different experiences with that. You were able to obviously talk to more people about programming and web development. Um, you were working with, well, the, the company that I was working for had a lot more uh, customers that to, to deal with, which had a lot more overhead, performance overhead, scalability issues and so forth. And so you, there was a, a whole range of new things that uh, I needed to pick up and, and, and run with. In my career, however, I was, I have stayed in companies for longer than three uh, years, longer than four years as well. Um, it's horses for courses really, but um, basically what I'm trying to say is if you feel that you are uh, stuck in the job that you're in, then perhaps it's time to uh, look elsewhere and use that as an opportunity to perhaps change certain elements of your current career path or current career status um, in order to experience different things. So if, for example, if you're working for a startup and you have been for say five years and they're still a startup, then maybe move on, maybe uh, look to a, a bigger company which has different sets of experiences that you can you can harness. So the third thing is to try both front end and back end development because when you start out as a web developer, you do not know which style of development you're best suited for, whether you're a front end developer or whether you're a back end developer. Because believe you me, there's different mindsets for both. Uh, the front end developer is obviously more tailored towards user interface and user experience. So, so they care a lot about the user journey, whereas the back end developer is more concerned about the data, how the data hangs together, how it's stored, how it's fetched, performance issues and so forth. Mix it up. There's no harm in trying both. There's no harm in discovering which one is best suited for you. By experiencing both front end and back end development from an early stage of your web development career, you also get a well rounded feel of development in general because you see the data from the user's point of view as well as the data from the database point of view where the data is stored. And so you, you have that journey, that end to end journey um, that you can you can use and you can sit on to the meetings for both back end and front end developers 
developers and advise. The third piece of advice that I would give is to be a full-time developer before being a freelance developer. So if you if you're looking to be a freelance developer, then I think it's very important to be full-time first. It's quite a challenge to be a freelance developer straight away because you are up against so many other people who have experience, who have the knowledge, who have the degrees and the and the uh, and the certificates behind them. Um, gain experience through working for companies learn how to do the do it the right way learn how to do it the wrong way build a lot of stuff break a lot of stuff and then be a freelancer um, and that that basically has worked for me and finally accept the fact that this is not a nine to five job you can't just go into the office at nine nine a.m in the morning start up the machine and then by five just turn everything off and completely forget about it in order for you to improve your skill set you must also do some work at home in your own time perhaps the company that you're working for is not providing you with the training that you need and it's not allowing you to progress in that field um, as a web developer and so you need to do the learn those skills at home. It costs a lot of money to go on courses for your company to put you on a course, but you, there's always other things that you can do in order to learn skills for web development. Uh, you could uh, watch some YouTube videos, watch my tutorials, uh, go to a couple of conferences, go to meetups, socialize with other programmers. This isn't just a career, this is a lifestyle and you need to accept that. It's not something that you can just put away when you finish work. Um, do some projects outside of work, do some side projects as well. Make sure that you've got some, um, some learning goals that you want to achieve within three, five, ten years time. And every so often keep reviewing those and keep on track. So I'm going to leave it there. If you found this uh, video helpful in any way, then please do give it a thumbs up. Do like it. Subscribe to get the next web chats as well as the tutorials that I've been doing each week. Thanks again. Happy coding. I'll see you again next time. Cheers.